This video is on intercostal nerves and in this video we will look at the classification of intercostal nerves, which intercostal nerves are typical nerves and which one are atypical and why they are atypical intercostal nerves and in the end we will look at the applied anatomy also. What are intercostal nerves? In this picture we can see a cross section through the thoracic wall. This is the anterior aspect and this is the posterior aspect. Here we can see a vertebral body and we can see within the vertebral foramen there is spinal cord. From the spinal cord two nerve roots are emerging. The ventral or the anterior root which is motor root and the posterior or dorsal root which is the sensory root along with the dorsal root ganglion. The two roots join together to form the spinal nerve. The spinal nerve then divides into a posterior or dorsal ramus which is going to supply the muscles and the skin over the posterior aspect of thoracic wall here. And then we have here the ventral ramus which is going to supply the anterolateral aspect of the thoracic wall, the skin or the structure and the muscles. So this anterior or ventral ramus of the thoracic nerve that is known as intercostal nerve. So how many thoracic nerves we have in total? We have 12 T1 to T12 uh, thoracic spinal nerves we have. So let us see here first again what are intercostal nerves? They are the ventral rami of thoracic spinal nerves which we can see here. Next, how many intercostal nerves are there? There are 11 intercostal nerves corresponding to 11 intercostal spaces. And the last one, that is the ventral ramus of 12th thoracic spinal nerve is known as subcostal nerve, which is going to run below, right, the 12th rib, right, because there is no other rib beyond the 12th rib. So that's why it is known as subcostal nerve. We classify intercostal nerves as either atypical or typical intercostal nerves. So let us see what is the criteria for classification of intercostal nerves. The typical intercostal nerves, there are only four typical intercostal nerves and these are third, fourth, fifth and sixth intercostal nerves and their branches can be seen here on the anterolateral aspect of thoracic wall. Now why we call them as typical intercostal nerves? Because they are confined to their respective intercostal spaces in the thoracic wall. They will be supplying only the thoracic wall and they will remain confined within their respective intercostal space and there they will give the branches. Now next is atypical intercostal nerves. So atypical intercostal nerves, there will be, these are four, so total are 11, so there will be seven uh, atypical intercostal nerves, first, second, and then from seventh to eleventh intercostal nerves. Why we call them as atypical? Because their distribution or the structures that they supply, they extend beyond the thoracic wall for distribution. So let us look at these atypical ones. We can see here, this is a branch of second intercostal nerve and we can see it is supplying the upper limb. Next is 7th to 11th which we can see here their branches here and these branches we can see they go beyond the thoracic wall and they reach the anterior abdominal wall also and the last one the subcostal nerve we can see its branches going to the gluteal region so there are only four typical intercostal nerves third to sixth right and first second now first I have not shown here but we will look uh, see in the next slide that it mainly contributes to brachial plexus and thereby it supplies upper limb. So first and second and then from 7 to 11 and then we have the subcostal these are atypical intercostal nerves. Okay, coming to first intercostal nerve, first intercostal nerve, this is the smallest, right, because it mainly contributes to brachial plexus. So most of it is, it is actually goes to the brachial plexus, joins the C8 
um, ventral ramus of C8 spinal nerve to form the lower trunk of the brachial plexus and thereby through that it supplies the upper limb. And uh, in case of thoracic region, it will be just be supplying the muscles which are present in the first intercostal space, but it has no cutaneous branch. So in thorax, it has no cutaneous branch. No T1 dermatome is present on the thoracic wall. You cannot see here. Look at this. After C4, we can see T2 dermatome. So T2 dermatome is placed adjacent to C4 dermatome and this is at the level of sternal angle. So you can see here the skin till the sternal angle is supplied by C4 spinal segment and then we have the T2 segment. Whereas T1 you can see is supplying the skin and the structures in the upper limb. Second intercostal nerve. So second intercostal nerve, we will see its lateral cutaneous branch, right? They have some cutaneous branches. The lateral cutaneous branch is known as intercostobrachial nerve. Intercostobrachial nerve and supplies the skin of the floor of the axilla and the skin over the medial side of the arm. So that's why it is atypical. Now, 7 to 11th intercostal nerves, they are also called as thoracoabdominal nerves. So, here you can see the branches, cutaneous branches of 7 to 11th uh, intercostal nerves. And we call them as thoracoabdominal nerves because they course first in the thoracic wall and then they are going to run in the anterior abdominal wall. So, they besides giving branches in the intercostal spaces to the intercostal muscles and the skin uh, over the intercostal spaces, they will also supply skin and muscles of anterior abdominal wall. Subcostal nerve which can be seen here supplies not only the skin of the anterior abdominal wall, this is also going to supply the skin over the gluteal region. Coming to applied anatomy. In pleurisy, that is inflammation of parietal pleura, a pleura is a membranous sac which actually covers the lung and has got two layers, visceral and parietal. So the parietal layer lines the inner aspect of the thoracic wall. So if there is inflammation of parietal pleura, then it will lead to irritation of thoracoabdominal nerves and may cause spasm of anterior abdominal wall muscles and referred pain to anterior abdominal wall. So one should remember that although lungs are present in the thoracic cavity, but the referred pain of the inflammation of parietal pleura or pleurisy can be felt in the anterior abdominal wall and it can also lead to spasm of anterior abdominal wall muscles. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe my channel so that I can put more such videos. And if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy, all types of that, then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com. Thanks once again.